weather's warming, and this is probably our last chance to get across to the off-grid cottage before the ice melts. It's always a bit dicey going in March. The ice can be pretty soft, so you don't know what you're going to get. And our road from the highway down into the cottage is about five kilometers. And it sometimes gets plowed, but sometimes it doesn't. And it can be pretty muddy. So it's always a bit of a gamble on whether we're going to be able to get all the way in. But I wanted to get up there and check and see if our batteries were okay and if the building was okay, and if uh, I needed to do any maintenance. So, we gave it a go. Well, the road was a bit of a mess. We got in here. There's no way we're getting down that. We're going to have to shovel the spot and park here and walk the rest of the way. Let's go, puppy. Come on, let's go. Lead the way, puppy. Luckily, there must have been some snowmobiles down here not too long ago, because the middle of the road was packed down, making walking a little easier. We're getting there. It's a rudimentary way of checking the ice, but basically I pound through until I find water. In this case, there was about a foot of good solid ice. We've checked the ice, looks good. Wearing our life jackets, just in case. And now, crossing there. The best part of this time of year is there's nobody else on the whole lake. We didn't see anyone else the entire time. That's okay by me. Iggy likes this rock because it smells like wolves. They come out on this rock and they mark their territory. So he uh, has to come mark it himself so that they know who's boss. Right, Iggy? Right, puppy? There's a little bit of standing water near the edges. This quite often happens when the sun warms the rocks here on the south side and heats up the ice, creating a little bit of a weak spot, but still good and solid. You did it. You made it. We are caught. Right. There was a good foot of wet snow once we got across, which made tough going for us, but Iggy had to basically jump from footstep to footstep. Keep going, Bobby.
We made it. <sighs> yes, it was a long trek, but we did it. Home sweet home. I try to always set up the fire so that all we have to do is arrive and light it. Well, it turns out our kettle has a hole in the bottom. So, so we've been gone for a while, and the lithium batteries have been completely disconnected the whole time. That's to avoid charging them when it's below zero. So here we're gonna hook it up, see what state of charge they're at, and get them charging again. So I'm just checking to make sure the battery's warm enough to begin charging. As you can see from the Victron app, the battery is at 44 volts, which is basically 50% charge. So it survived being unplugged completely for about five months. Since our water system has been closed down for the winter, we decided to collect water that was dripping off the roof. Simple, but we just need it for washing some dishes. I noticed a bit of water in the bathroom and I realized that the snow has damaged the vent stack for our composting toilet. So I'm going to go up and have a look and see if we can do some repairs until spring. Yeah, you can see I, I didn't brace properly and the snow that slides down this roof just cleaved that chimney right off. I was afraid this would happen. I got away with it last year and the year before, but this year I guess the snow just piled up and when it slid down, it took out the vent pipe for the composting toilet. This won't be pretty, but it'll get us through till spring.
I'm always looking to run more things off our solar power. I just get a kick out of the fact that we can do so many things with a very simple solar setup. So when the folks at NASM sent us this uh, electric chainsaw to review, I thought, you know what? This isn't going to replace my gas one, but it could take place for a lot of small duties around the cottage. So I wanted to check it out. Well, let's put it to work and see what it can do. So I got the top of this oak that we cut down last year, but we never got around to cleaning up all these branches. So we're going to give this 20 volt NASM electric saw that we charged off of solar. And give it a go, see if it can help clean up this stuff, small stuff. So this is oak, and this piece I'm going to cut is about four inches in diameter. Let's give it a go. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's try to cut this part. This is about five, maybe five and a half inches. Right here. That's not too bad. Cutting with the power of the sun. Uh, 30 cuts, cut uh, some 6 inch diameter down to about 1 inch diameter, uh, probably cut for about 30 minutes on one battery, not bad. So what do I like? I like it's quiet, so I can't stand the noise of a chainsaw. Uh, starts and stops, you don't, have to, don't have to let it idle, uh, charges off our solar, so you're cutting wood with the power of the sun, and you know what? It's a pretty good little unit for... Not a lot of money. There's links below if you want to check it out. We got a lot of rain overnight and I was starting to get concerned that the lake was really starting to melt. So here around the edges, it was very soft. And in some spots you could actually see through to the next layer of ice. What had happened is there was probably a foot or two of ice that formed a bunch of snow and then another two or three inches of ice. And that top layer was almost completely melted now. And while it probably still is safe to walk across knowing that there's another foot of ice below that, it's pretty uncomfortable and unsettling to be wading through slush and not really being able to see the solid ice that you're hoping is underneath there. So I was starting to think we may need to take the hard way out. 
Pig, pig. Of course, Iggy's not concerned. He's got all his toys and he's sitting by the fire. That's all that matters to him. We went down to the edge on our last day and had a look and it was looking pretty scary. So we decided we would hike out to the end of the bay and go across the beaver dam. Crossing this beaver dam is a bit of a challenge, but I think it's worth it. When we got there, there was about six inches of water going over the length of the dam. And it's a little sketchy, but if you stay close to the shrubs that are growing on top of the dam, it's relatively solid. <sighs> oh, what do you think? We made it. <laughs> Your preferred method? Ice. <laughs> yeah. Or po rowing a boat. Yeah. Once we were across, it was another about a kilometer, a kilometer and a half back to hike back to our car. But it's probably an elevation gain of about a hundred feet. From Iggy and I, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Ontario Lakeside.